Hello, my friends. Jacob's here one more time. Thank you for pressing play, for spending some time with me. What a program. Oh, my goodness gracious. If you're new to the program, you'll, you'll find soon enough that I'll start doing goofy things on the show. I'll talk about certain things. And then all of a sudden, boom, there they are. Well, guess what? Remember the goofy show that I just did where you got to meet the uh, my, my Irish alter ego? Okay. Well, turns out jellyfish and eggs and everything else all packed into this program. That's right. I'm not just talking about the fact that scientists within the last 24 to 48 hours or so have uh, from Caltech basically know how to read the mind of jellyfishes. Yes, that's right. Scientists have discovered a way to read the minds of jellyfish and they say it's phenomenal, at least in the title. They also discovered a rare, ultra rare, giant phantom jellyfish. The thing is huge in the deep sea. And look at that thing. Beautiful, graceful, a gorgeous shiitake mushroom over a bed of kelp. That's what I see. Very strange. Or a nice cool hat that somebody might wear to church. <laughs> it's a gigantic jellyfish. But we're talking about space jellyfish, right? So why not take a look at that? You ever see one? Well, during the SpaceX Falcon launch where they, I believe they just launched another 50 of the satellites so Elon Musk can control the world, uh, you'll see one. Yeah, he, he now owns and controls a third of all active space satellites. Tis strange. But not even as close to as strange as all the things that are going down. You know, from the eclipse on December 4th, which I'm going to touch on, there's a biblical tie into this to a, a huge, gigantic asteroid near us is its name. It's an egg shaped, no less. But near us is not just kind of weird like it's near us. You're going to find out that there's a lot more. Everything's connected. It's all so very exciting. And I believe there's a great message in it and something that's important for all of you to see. So I hope that you are subscribed to the channel. I hope that you can like this and comment to get the ball rolling, to get more people here to see this because we got uh, we got big days coming. We had a big day, big days on its way, right? And I'm excited because at the end of the program, you'll find out, that's why. So buckle up. Teach me the truth, no matter what the cost. Isn't that cool? This is, uh, Noah made this. Noah made this, which I thought was so nice. And I love it. I love it because everybody was like, what happened to the teach me the truth stuff? Well, we thought that it would be kind of cool to put something out for, uh, you know, for the holidays going into the new year. So this is going to be like one of those things. We, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Noah had a great idea and I really do love it. And so if you want, you know, if you want to get somebody to ask for the truth and you think it might be a cool way to do it, you can go to the description in the link below. There's a store. I have a store. I have, you know, this I Am a Witness shirt and other things, you know, for the holidays because things are coming up, you know, might be a nice thing to get, might be nice. And we're not going to have it for very long and it's nice, right? <laughs> but now that I got that out of the way, let's get into the show. I have so many things to discuss with you. I don't even know where to start, to be frank. So I think I'm just going to start with the uh, the potentially hazardous asteroid that's going to break into Earth's, you know, our orbit. It's going to happen. That's right. December 11th. It's a big deal. NASA is expecting this asteroid, which is 4660, near us to, uh, you know, kind of come in close, but not that close. They say it's not that big of a deal. They've had their eyes on it for a while. But why do I think it's interesting? Because I was just doing a program and I've been talking a lot about weird things and comets and asteroids and all of these things, right? You got to watch the last show. I'm not going to talk about it here too much. But I talked about like a sea monster, right? The jellyfish, the monster jellyfish. There's a lot of stuff in the news about jellyfish too right now. Where do you hear that? mentioned the Kraken, releasing the Kraken, all of these things, right? You think, oh, totally unconnected to the the, uh, the asteroid that's coming our way. 
the eggs, right? The eggs. Turns out this is an egg-shaped asteroid. They're making a big point of saying that because, uh, you know, it travels very fast. It's an egg. want to point out like there's a, a gabillion alien movies about viruses you know that traveled on uh <laughs> these uh asteroids or the pan sperms on you you know talked about that on the show the irish guy said from uh, Invasion, which is like a remake of the Body Snatchers. I just saw another one, I think it was on Prime, uh, you know, about uh, an alien race coming down to make hybrids, to make, you know, to kind of take over as hosts. Arrival, which was great. I don't remember how long ago it was. I think it was maybe in or maybe 2007 or so. But it was a great movie. They came down. Their craft was an egg. show that I was just watching on uh, I think it's Prime all these eggs showed up and then they exploded and like all this black smoke came out and basically infected everybody eggs eggs and jellyfish right there was a movie on Netflix a big deal ad Vitman which was about living forever and jellyfish was the, the reason I learned how to genetically modify things things eggs 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 everywhere you look eggs now here's an asteroid that's shaped like an egg coincidence right well maybe not that much of a coincidence but then when you look at the name and you consider what we're talking about near us let me let me let me let me read some of this to you So the 4660 near us, <laughs> like near us, and, uh, is a 330 meter asteroid in the shape of an egg that's going to come by December 11th. Scientists anticipate it coming in within 2.5 million miles of the Earth. Despite what it sounds like, it's pretty far away, they're saying. But that's not why I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm thinking, I wonder if it has anything to do with the jellyfish invasion aliens and krakens and the eggs. You know, because I see that, I go, well, let me take a look. See, this is how it comes. People say, how do you connect the dots? How does that happen? I don't know. I don't know. I pray. I say, Lord, what should I talk about? What's the next show, Lord? And then I wait. And then boom, pff, things just, and then I get ideas. And then it's like, pff, there's another idea. Look up Nearest. I wonder if Nearest is connected to the Kraken. To the Kraken. I wonder if Nearest has anything to do with sea monsters rising out of the sea which I just did a bunch of shows, right? I had the uh, the egg, the beast. I saw a beast rising out of the sea. It's in the book of Revelation. We had Kylie Jenner on the cover. This one. So, is there a connection? Yes, there is. In the Iliad, the old man in the sea. It's a, uh, it's a god, <laughs> okay? That's right, Nerus, the first, uh, seems to be two manifestations of the god of the sea. Interesting, right? Interesting. Shapeshifter, who's known to uh, send the Kraken, to turn into the Kraken. Actually, even a DC comic had Nerus 
turning into the Kraken and bringing judgment. This is weird, right? You have a you have an asteroid in the shape of an egg. <laughs> just do a show. It's just this is why I get excited because I'm like, hey, it's something to talk about at least, right? Yeah, in the uh, 2016 DC bombshells, King Nearest took on the form of the Kraken to battle. In Greek religion, he's the sea god. Old man of the sea, noted for his wisdom and his prophecy and his shape-shifting ability. He was given birth by the earth, Gaia. Gaia gave birth to this beast of the sea. The beast that rises out of the sea, the earth gives birth to. Hey, take, take a second to think about that. Christ comes into the world, takes upon himself, the sins of the world, dies, right? And then so in Adam, all men die. We all become ignorant of the truth. And then the earth forms us. The earth gives birth to us. Starts to, you know, your name is Jacob. You should believe this, right? You're, 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 you're uh, forced to believe that you are everything that you were told you are and everything that you've experienced. The earth gives birth to this beast, this first man, this ignorant man. Ironically, Nearest, same thing. Gaia or something. Yeah, the Earth Goddess gives birth to this. And it's connected to the Kraken. Sea monster. Asteroids. And an egg. And that's just the beginning of the program. Wait till you get to the good stuff I haven't even mentioned yet, which is going to make you go... So you have all these movies, you have all these movies, these alien invasion movies. All of them, the same symbolism. You have all the celebrities, the eggs, and you see jellyfish starting to pop up everywhere. And then all of a sudden today, in today's news, right? What is this? Scientists discover a way to read the minds of jellyfish? And I'm doing a program about, you know, and I'm goofing around? Because, listen, I did it, it was a parody, it was, I was a goof. Like I said, you, you can let fear get to the best of you. I don't want people to think that I, you know, that I believe or, or I don't believe these things. I want you to, you know, you, what do you think? What do you think? I'm, I'm being a goofball up here, I'm just saying silly things. What do you think? What do you think? So now even though jellyfish, they don't have brains, they have a nervous system, and they, you know, they're pretty interesting. They've been studying for a long time. We talked recently, well, just recently, right? I, I, in the program that I just did, the little, the, the Irish guy reminds me of the invasion of the jellyfish show that I did, Be Ready for the Jellyfish <laughs> Invasions Upon Us, because of all the interesting information about these jellyfish that I found, especially the ones that were discovered in Antarctica, which is quite interesting. There's a connection here. Jellyfish are all the rage. Right now, there's a lot of, they just did this beautiful documentary. Uh, the title was Underworld Views of Antarctic Jellies Are a Magic Portal to Another World.
you know, this is a, this is a thing. They found jellyfish in animals. These microscopic parasitic jellyfish, this is what I talked about. They evolved to basically kind of slough off their body and then they just come into a host and then they, you know, become part of, just like those alien movies. Is that happening from space? I don't know. Do I think this is real? I just think it's all cool and very coincidental. I'm not really stressed out about jellyfish. I'm more stressed out about people not loving and being kind and not listening and seeing the signs. What's really cool is that a man walking on the beach, a prehistoric fish, but he thought it was a jellyfish. That's what caught my attention. He walks up on this thing and it looks, he thought it was a jellyfish. Closer look, it was a Pacific football fish. That's an angler. You know those scary monster fish that are in the deepest part of the sea? These fish. That's what it was. It was one of those angler fish. It was scary looking, big teeth, sharp teeth. If you don't know anything about them, they exist in like the deepest parts of the sea. And uh, there's a great parable. There are a great parable of false teachers, false prophets, lies. So here you have this ancient great allegory of, you know, just dangling a little teeny bit of fake light. It's not even a real light. A little bit of fake light. They come to the fake light and then the monster from the sea eats them up. Just like the Kraken. A lot of false teachers out there in the world. Lots of them. But that's okay. God makes everything, God works everything out, as you're going to see with this eclipse and a story of a king named Hezekiah. Now I want to get into I want to get into the uh, eclipse for from a moment. This week's unique reverse. Did you hear those words? Reverse. See, a lot of people are talking about a lot of things about the eclipse, which is cool. Like I, uh, um, I just saw Casey entered stars. I guess some people have been he does stuff, and then people I guess take it and credit whatever he's been. Feel bad for the guy. You know, it happens to me all the time too. It happens to Marv. It happens to a lot of people. And uh, but you know, I I met I I, I did a show. Went with uh, first with um, KJ and Casey was like, no, 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 you know, I like the guy, so I started watching him, and now and then I hear him. He just did a whole breakdown of, of the eclipse, and what I found was interesting was he said that it happens right, it looks like the serpent is being crowned, and right there with the fucus. Now, you know, uh, it's it's pronounced so fucus, by the way, Case, just in case you're watching, <laughs> he, was, he was wondering how to pronounce it. Um, I've talked about a fucus a lot, a lot. Remember that black hole? opened up after a thousand years of being closed and shot all of these particles and blew right through Ophiuchus. And I said, that's kind of like the pit opening up. All this stuff happened right around the time that they had that very strange tunnel opening, the uh, Gothard tunneled, the weird thing, everything, everybody's celebrating, you know, the light coming into the world, the fake light. So the serpent being crowned, I guess, is a big thing. But people forget that a fucus is a picture of the shepherd. It's that it, locked in that battle. It's the picture of, of Christ right there wrestling that serpent. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. So that's okay if the serpent is crowned for the moment. It's okay if the ego and the carnal man and the, the, the devils of the world, the people that are demonically possessed, meaning they're possessed by terrible thoughts and they care, they're nihilistic and they don't care about anybody. They're not serving God, they're serving themselves. It's okay if they get crowned for a little while because in the grand scheme of things, God works everything out. So the fact that this eclipse is happening over Antarctica, which is very strange. It's a very short one, by the way. It's only a minute and 54 seconds. And I was like thinking, well, what does that mean? It's only a minute and 54 seconds. And then it hits me. It's six seconds shy 
of two minutes. Huh? Yeah, I thought that was thin too. I didn't, yeah, but eh, whatever. So it, it wasn't the fact that it was just so short and the fact that this is very rare, this eclipse taking place at the same time with the asteroid, at the same time with the comet. We got Comet Leonard too. We got so much stuff going on. I wouldn't doubt things are gonna get rocky. Hear me? You're gonna get rocky. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. South Pole being tilted toward the Sun because of this positioning it seems that the eclipse in the shadow goes backwards very strange the path of totality curves across the lines of longitude and moves backwards on the map now why is this interesting because I see this and I think oh my goodness if then because these stars and these comets and these signs in the heavens we're supposed to know right that 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 god will speak to people inspire them to look deeper by the signs in the heavens by the events that take place like the ones we've talked about here on the show so this eclipse taking place and the shadow moving backwards the first thing i thought about was hezekiah Hezekiah, right? He uh, he kind of served God, and he 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 looked to God, and you know he prayed to God, and he knew that when he was in trouble, that he he needed God. And Isaiah was a prophet at the time that you know spoke on God's behalf to Hezekiah. God had delivered Hezekiah out of the hands of these you know, scary people that worship all sorts of other gods again and again and again. But Hezekiah ends up very very ill, very sick. Hezekiah could be a picture of us, king, right? So the king of the earth, king of the earth, right? The, uh, the carnal man, the first idea of us, sick, very ill. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, it says, In those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says, put your house in order. How about them apples? Put your house in order. Get ready. Be better. Because you are going to die. You will not recover. How about that, right? So Hezekiah's like, oh no. All right, well, I better put my house in order then, right? That's what he, uh, that's what he would be thinking. That's what I would be thinking. That's what I've been telling all of you to do. Get your house in order because in the days to come, regardless of what happens, it doesn't matter as long as you're okay with God because that's the only thing that matters in the world. Hezekiah's stressing out. He doesn't want to die. He doesn't, that new variant's spooky. He's spooked out. He, so he turns his face to the Lord and he prays, Remember, Lord, how I walk before you faithfully with wholehearted devotion, and I've done so. What is good in your eyes? And Hezekiah, he witter, bitterly wept. And before Isaiah left, I guess God spoke to him. He says, Go back. Listen, he's crying. He's acting like a big baby. Will you tell him? Listen, I'll give you a little more time. Which is what happens. The God of your father, David, says... I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I'll heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. Allowed 15 years on the third day, you'll go up to the temple of the Lord. Who's the temple of the Lord? You are. On the third day, what happens? Christ rises. I'm going to give you some more life here. I'll add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I'll defend the city for my sake and for the sake of my servant, David. Then Isaiah said, prepare a bunch of figs. Get it ready for a sacrifice. And he put the figs on top of the boil. He was so sick, he had these boils all over him. And he recovered. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, what will be the sign that he's gonna really heal me? What's the sign, what's the sign? What's, people wanna know, Jacob, how do you know it's gonna be okay? What's the sign? What's the sign, what's, what's the sign? Now we're not supposed to ask for signs, Christ said. We're not supposed to. A wicked and vile generation asks for a sign. That doesn't mean that God doesn't still give you signs. It means that you, you're not like, I'm not going to believe in you until you show me. That's not what Hezekiah is asking. It's like, I need a little more encouragement, a little more of my faith. I know you're true, but what's the sign you're going to give me? And you know what? You know what the sign is? The eclipse's shadow goes back, right? Same thing. The shadow on the sundial. So Isaiah says to him, all right, here's going to be the sign. This is what we're going to do. Do you, uh, you want the sundial to move 10 degrees, you know, 10 steps forward or 10 steps back? They have the sundial. 
How is God going to move the earth? God going to move the sun? How's that going to happen? How's he going to make the shadow go forward? So Hezekiah is thinking, oh, well, going forward, that's, that, 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 that could happen. That makes sense. But how about going backward? That's not, that's not normal. That's very abnormal. It's very peculiar to have a shadow go backward. So he tells Isaiah, tell him that I want to go backward. Guess what happens? Shadow goes backward. Shadow goes backward. shadow is going backward here. You want a sign? You want to know if God's okay? You want, you want, you're worried about the space invader jellyfish, which is a goof. It's a juke. It's a parody, people. All right. This is, a, I, I, I write it in the description. This is just speculation. I'm a writer. I like to look at life through the lens of that. Everything that I talk about here is inspired and the message of everything is never to be scared. It's always to love, to be kind, to not get carried away with foolishness. The shadow. You want a sign? There's your sign. Same thing right there in the scriptures. There's nothing new under the sun. So listen, all of this stuff that we've talked about, here it is, right? All of this stuff happening. It's a big day. It's a big day. And uh, I'm going to have another video coming very shortly. It's the holiday season, right? It's holiday season. And a doopy doop and a boppity pop. That's all I hear. Dappity boop, a deep a doppa doop boop, a boppa doop a deep a doppa. That's what you do when you don't know the words. I um I, I'm grateful to all of you. I'm very, very whatever you whatever you celebrate, right? You remember J uh, Jacob, Jacob from the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, they didn't have like Christmas, they didn't have this, they didn't have that. These are religious traditions. The scriptures say, I, I celebrate Christmas if you want to know. Okay, I know. You know what you want to talk about Satan Claus and all. Okay, that's all right. Nobody believes in Satan Claus here. But my point is, I'm moving forward. The scriptures ask us to move forward from vain traditions, laying on of hands, baptism, all that. Get it. Pass it. Have a relationship with God. Stop getting, you know. So with, with this, this is, this is um, you know, this is what matters. Asking for the truth no matter what the cost. You want to get something that's nice. You want to get something that means something. Every time people read it, they're asking for the truth. They don't even know it. Not like we're tricking them. But it's important. And uh, my novel, that's the big thing. I would love for you to get a copy of my novel. Um, hopefully the audiobook will come. My voice, it's hard for me. But please, you know, pick yourself up a copy. Give it away as a gift. Thank you for all the reviews. This helps me like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's just me. This takes a lot of work. And I'm so grateful that I finally, you know, had the Lord kind of move me out of where I was going and encourage me to stop being scared. And man, what a blessing it's been. Look at how the channel's grown just since I've left in August. This is, and it's thanks to all of you because you're sharing, you're liking, you're commenting, and you're part of this. And you understand that whatever's being shared here, it's not about coming to Jacob's Well all the time and believing Jacob's Well's got all the juice. No, it's that you come here, if you leave without Christ, who sits at the well because Christ is in my heart, and you don't follow Christ, and you just stay here for that, you're going to thirst again. But if you know God, if you ask for the truth, no matter what the cost, it's going to be like a life spring coming up from within you. You'll never thirst again. You'll never hunger for the truth of God again. And you'll never fear again. So the shadow went backwards. This should be a sign. This should make you feel good. This should be exciting, regardless of what's happening. Whether it's all just coincidence or it's something like out of a movie with all the movies that they continue to share. But I don't know. But you know what? What I do know is that this book is awesome. So if you can, if you, you know, if you want to, I don't ask enough. I don't thank enough. Um, thank you to all my patrons. Of course, you can get involved there. Thank you to everybody who, who um, donates on PayPal. Thank you for everybody who understands that there's more to this and there's more to you than we know and we've been told. And um, I just hope that, you know, I, I, even this story, I mean, you look at it from here, to here. We're in the famine spiritually. We're entering into there. We're entering into the garden. Oh, here you go. I'll just open up to something. Here we go. 
and I have these little poems in between chapters, so this isn't going to give it away, but I'll just read the poem. The longer we dwell on the faults of others, the longer our peace is smothered. The longer we replay the pain of yesterday, the harder it is to enjoy today. The longer we wait to end our debate, a world at war we will continue to create. The longer it takes to appreciate that you can do what you've always dreamed to do, the farther away that dream will stay instead of being accomplished by you. When nothing seems to go your way, when you believe you've had the absolute worst day, when it seems people have nothing nice to say, when your blue skies have turned to nothing but gray, you must remember times like these won't always stay because you've entered into a new day where nothing shall be impossible to you. The novel, it's awesome. I'm gonna leave, uh, I'm gonna, right now, stick around. I'm gonna play the, uh, the trailer, so. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Give it a like and a thumbs up. Talk to you soon. I love you all. Bye bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger. It could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Thank you.